out there. It's David Duford here at David Duford, where I help insurance agents like you become top producing insurance professionals. Thank you for watching. In this video, I'm going to detail the survey results that I just tallied up and completed on how coronavirus has affected insurance agents across the country. So without further ado, I'm going to jump to my screen and uh, show you a quick PowerPoint I put together on the questions I ask and the surprising results that I got. And here we are, how coronavirus has impacted insurance agents and the survey results that come from them. So let's get started. A little uh, research detail first before we get much further. So first of all, this survey was conducted to agents on my email newsletter marketing list, as well as those who watch my video on YouTube. Conducted between May the 9th of 2020 and ended on May 20th of 2020. A total of 153 licensed insurance agents responded with their experience selling during the COVID-19 crisis. And uh, a little bit of context of how I put together the survey. I split the results into two different camps. One camp being final expense agents and the other camp being everybody else that is a licensed insurance agent. The reason I did that is because my audience is predominantly final expense. That is the amount of the primary business I do in my insurance agency where I recruit agents like you across uh, the uh, fruited plains. And I wanted to uh, investigate the difference, if any, between the responses of those who sell final expense exclusively, or at least as a primary product, and those who sell something else as a primary product. And just so you see below the distribution of different types of um, agents, 47.7% are final expense agents, and then the other 52.3% are something else. Okay, so the first question I asked was, so far, how has COVID-19 impacted your new insurance policy sales? The obvious reason I asked this is because COVID-19 and the economic fallout has basically touched everything in major ways. And I wanted to measure the response, again, based off of final expense agents and every other kind of agent, and see how things have affected them uh, up to this point at the uh, conducting of the survey. So final expense agents compared to all other agents, about the same said uh, sales are down, about the same said sales are up, and about the same said no impact whatsoever. So bottom line, the 80-20 the, uh, rule seems to apply here. Uh, three out of seven are uh, going along all the same, if not better, and the bottom 80% or that bottom 70% in this uh, has seen a reduction or uh, an impact on their sales. So I think it's safe to say across the board, COVID-19 has definitely made an impact. <clears throat> Question number two is, how have you changed your sales process since COVID-19 began? The reason I ask this question is because what COVID-19 has presented some of us in the insurance business is the opportunity to diversify your sales efforts away from face-to-face -face sales to phone sales. We do have the ability for most insurance products to sell insurance sight unseen. And there have been a lot of agents who have considered selling over the phone that maybe now have the opportunity to do so. So I wanted to measure to see what the results were to see how the distribution was different between those who are final expense agents and those who sell something else as a primary product. Possible answers include, I have sold insurance over the phone since COVID-19 began and do not sell insurance face-to-face, -face, or I have transitioned to selling more insurance over the phone due to COVID-19. And the third option was, despite COVID-19, I exclusively sell insurance face-to-face -face and do not sell over the phone. So um, that would be, they still sell face-to-face still face -face no matter what. And it seems to be about the same layout for everybody, a little bit of deviation here and there. So I think the major takeaway in comparing final expense agents and then everyone else is that there is a bigger chunk of agents around four out of 10 that have decided to do some level of telesales in their business. And there's a good chunk that have been selling over the phone anyway, and uh, the four out of 10 there, and uh, a good chunk, you know, maybe about a, a fifth of to a fourth, somewhere in there, that has continued to sell face to face despite that. So interesting to think about, interesting to analyze, uh, but a big change definitely towards the telesales side of the business. Third question, if you've transitioned to selling insurance over the phone, do you plan on going back to exclusively selling face-to-face -face in the future? The reason I ask this is to uh, test to see how many people were doing telesales out of necessity 
not desire. And the number of people who were more interested in getting back to the way things used to be, as they say, when they sold uh, insurance face to face. The answers or possible answers include, yes, I plan on going back to face to face insurance sales as soon as possible. Both. I plan on doing a mix of telesales and face to face going forward. And no, I will purely sell insurance over the phone. This has been an interesting question because you can compare and contrast final expense agents against everybody else. There is a much larger proportion, approximately 25% more of the percentage says of, of all insurance agents except uh, final expense agents say they plan on doing more telesales or both, I'm sorry, uh, 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 both telesales and face-to-face -face going forward. Uh, and that's 46% of final expense agents said that versus 72% approximately of all other agents said they plan on doing both. Whereas with final expense agents, there's 30% say that they're going to plan on going face-to-face -face as soon as possible, whereas everybody else is saying only 14% are going to plan on going back to face-to-face. -to -face. So a big difference there, as you can tell, that just tells us that at least for the list that works and uh, responded to the survey, a lot of them do face-to-face, -face, had been, and really want to go back once things uh, chill out. And um, there is a greater number, however, that have said that in the final expense world than the um, non-final expense world that want to do purely telesales. I found that interesting. 22% uh, or 23% of final expense agents versus 14% of all other agents plan on specifically doing telesales going forward because of this. So these are agents, again, transitioning from face-to-face -to, -face to telesales. So it's kind of an interesting dichotomy, more polarization I would see uh, in the final expense market. Uh, it's either one or the other, more likely in final expense, you're gonna go all telesales or all face-to-face, -face, but a lot more acceptance of doing both in the rest of the insurance uh, world. Fourth question, for those of you who purchase leads, have you seen an increase or decrease in the quality of your leads? And the reason I ask this question is just to see, uh, to judge uh, if, if response has improved or quality has improved or it has decreased, and it's about the same. Around four out of 10 agents say it has increased and six out of 10 agents say it has decreased. And the uh, final question on the survey is, how do you see the COVID-19 crisis impacting your insurance sales business for the remainder of 2020? Again, looking forward to the rest of the year, what does the agent expect to happen? Possible answers include, I expect to sell more policies. I don't expect COVID-19 to have much of an impact either way on new policy sales. Third question, I expect to sell less policy. So again, uh, slight difference here, interesting to see. It appears to be that final expense agents are less uh, bearish, if you will, on uh, the future and more bullish, meaning more agents, 52% compared to 42% of all other agents, uh, final expense agents expect to do more business going forward. So there's a slight, more, a slight higher level of enthusiasm, it appears, in going forward and making sales, whether they're over the phone or face-to-face. About the same, don't expect the crisis to change uh, things that much. But there's a larger percentage of the non-final expense agent world, about uh, 40% versus 30% of final expense agents, say that they expect to make less sales. So bottom line, looks like the final expense market is a little bit more enthusiastic of the future than the rest at large. In addition to surveying the responses uh, for the qu last questions, I also wanted to get some comments directly from the words of agents on how their experience has been so far through coronavirus. And I've categorized a selection of responses between the ugly, the bad, and the good. So let's read through these so you understand the actual uh, comments from the agents. First question or first statement, I had a group of 200 employees I was not able to meet face to face. I lost a lot of money in that group. I called some, sent out a letter to call me, and not many responses. COVID-19 has made it virtually impossible to do in-home or in-office appointments and has had a devastating impact. It has affected my sales by 75%. Basically, I was at a standstill except for current client service sales and referrals. Zero mortgages at all and my prospects have been terrified. I sell voluntary benefits in the worksite with nearly all worksites closing. My business is dramatically slowed. It's like a rug was ripped out from underneath my business. It's like a train wreck, horribly derailed. The bad. Lousy, huge impact on business networking. 
I do not sell until this pandemic is over. Very sparse face-to-face -face FEX final expense sales since mid-March. Again, we're at mid-May as of the uh, survey, so two months. Since telesales is a different skill set, don't want to make, waste money on lead costs, and also felt that telesales strategy would be flooded in many markets across the country, and ROI would be distorted. COVID-19 has totally changed the way I do business, and not in a good way. I will have to change a product I sell. It's scary out there. The good. So it's not all bad news or ugly news. So some good comments from the survey I did. Sales have gone up 50%. Switching to telesales is a game changer. And yeah, sometimes I close only one out of 10 presentations, but I, I can get 10 plus presentations completed in six or few hours a day and write one to two deals a day. People are home more, so my contact ratio has been up. I've been working my client database and between buying two sets of leads and my clients, I've written 11,000 in final expense and term mortgage protection insurance. I sell less mortgage protection over the phone than face-to-face, -face, but I am grateful for the experience. Now I only want to sell over the phone. So there you have it. That is the results from my COVID-19 insurance agent survey. And before you go, I wanted to uh, insert my own commentary a little bit now that we're at the end of the survey and try to provide some context, some thoughts that I've had in doing this little study uh, to hopefully help uh, everybody out in some form or fashion. So first of all, I think the biggest takeaway here is that winners are winners. Winners will find a way despite any negative and bad circumstances. I believe the people that will make it out of this COVID-19 crisis, at least in the insurance business, probably in any business uh, that is out there, are those that have the mindset and the will to adapt, that understand that opportunities are in, in all over the place, especially when there are problems, when there's blood in the streets. Sometimes that's the best time to be in business. So I stress to you out there watching, if you were one of these that commented, that uh, provided information, or if you're suffering, please look for the opportunities. It may be in something else other than where you're at. It may not even be in this business. Uh, I hope it is. It's a great business to be in, and I think it will be for the long run. But you've got to look at what's happening in your life and your business and look for where the unfound opportunity is. Uh, again, I can only relay my own personal experience. I got started in the final expense insurance business in 2011 at a point of desperation. Nobody sells insurance unless you're really desperate, right? <laughs> at least it was for me. But if you remember back in 2011, some of you are old enough to remember, that was the middle of the Great Recession. Sure, Wall Street had recovered. Things were doing better uh, on paper, I guess you could say, but Main Street was still getting killed. I had a personal training gym. Uh, it was the uh, baby of my life, I guess you could say. And I sat back the last year to two years watching my clientele slowly dwindle away with my personal training clients staying on less, spending less, and uh, not coming by as frequent. So it was like watching... Uh, a ship slowly or a plane slowly glide towards running into the side of the mountain. It was a, a slow death, if you will. And I was depressed. I tried getting jobs. I tried working elsewhere. But I am so thankful. I'm so blessed that I had this opportunity to struggle early in my life because I ran into this wonderful business called insurance. I would not have been here where I'm at in, this, in, in my life now. And this is my key point, especially the people that you're in business for your first time and you're struggling right now and you're wondering if you should keep going, if the opportunity is there. If I had never struggled at that point, I would have never been where I am at today. Of course, in the midst of it all happening, nobody sits around and thinks, thank God I'm struggling. Thank God I'm in a position to where I'm you know, struggling to pay my bills, where my family thinks I'm crazy for doing this business. Nobody thinks that, but you have to have a sense of faith. The things will improve. I assure you they will, okay? And if you can stick to this business, there is so much opportunity. And the thing is, is you're going to come out of this stronger. You're going to come out of this more successful. And you're going to have a level of experience that's going to take you to new heights. If you can wade your way through the mess that's now here and is coming. I believe the fundamentals of this business are absolutely 100% sound. I think that certain businesses are going to be better off for sure during the coronavirus and certainly the aftermath. That's why I have doubled, tripled down even on the senior market with an, an, an intense focus in final expense Medicare as well as annuity sales. I think the opportunity there is ripe, it's sound, 
and it's there for the taking for those agents that go all in on that particular segment. It may not be for others, which is why uh, I say, look at your problems if you're in another line of business and ask yourself, how long do you think this is gonna continue? Should you continue to be in? Maybe you should. But if you have doubts, don't just leave the business entirely. There are business lines right now within insurance that are doing wonderfully. I talk to agents every day that are still making a lot of sales, that are successful, that are happy with the decision they've made, specializing in the market that they did. So I highly encourage you to stick with it. Ask yourself if what you're selling is where you really want to be for the next couple of years, because I think that's how long this whole thing's going to be drawn out, and where you see yourself over the long haul. If you're interested in the final expense, Medicare or annuity market, I highly uh, recommend that you check out more about how those uh, business models work. I got lots of free training available on my website, davidufour.com. Uh, you don't have to work with me to get access to it. Just look under the training tab and you'll see all sorts of stuff. But this is a great opportunity to reassess and to reassert the direction you want to go in your career. And uh, last but not least, I do hope that none of you leave this business because of this. Please don't. Find a way to continue. It will be well worth the investment. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.